Hey Glam Fam, Linwood here, and today I am going to show you how to cornrow like this here. So the camera's a little bit closer than usual because it's a lot of fine details. Um, now, of course, a lot of people look at cornrows and they think that it is just a smaller version of your Dutch braids. And in some ways it is, but in a lot of ways it is not. So I'm going to tell you guys some of the main differences between cornrowing and Dutch braiding as we do this. And that way you can kind of know what the expectation is there. Um, so of course I want to start off, key thing that you're going to pay attention to when you're cornrowing is going to be your uh, section sizes as well as the parting size in the nape because the nape is typically much thinner and then this wider portion of the head here is significantly wider. So whenever we're doing cornrows we always want to make sure that we are doing so uh, with that in mind and we're always parting slightly wider in the widest section of the head and slightly, slightly more narrow in the nape. So wider in the crown, more narrow in the nape. Okay, so I'm gonna start off. I hardly ever do my braids going straight back. I always do them kind of from a point or at a slight angle just because I feel like on larger heads, it makes your head look like a watermelon if you are um, braiding them straight back. Uh, so I don't do prison cornrows for that reason. And um, I know some of y'all are probably like, that's a bit ridiculous, Limwood, but that's okay. Um, you know, that's my personal preference. So try not to beat me up too bad for it. I just don't wanna give my clients no watermelon heads. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish parting through here, which is pretty much what I've done now. And we're gonna clip this excess hair off to the side. And I will tell you if the hair is shorter or if it's fine like this hair here, uh, you may want to go ahead and just um, get more than one clip. Typically one clip is not going to serve you well for this purpose. So a lot of people I'll see where they'll try to start braiding this hair up with one clip in there and they think that it's gonna work and then they're fighting with all of the other hair that needs to be left out of the braid. So as a result of that, I feel like it's best that um, we kind of discuss that a bit too. So typically, if I were in the salon, I would put either duck bill clips along here and then have maybe two clips and that way it helps to keep all those little flyaways out of the way. Now, when I'm parting this space here, you can see it's not extremely wide. We're looking at like a quarter of an inch subsection in here. There we go, like a quarter of an inch subsection in here. But when you come back to the nape area, notice how thin my parting is in there. Like that is significantly less than a quarter of an inch. That isn't even an eighth of an inch. It's probably not even a sixteenth once I get down here really close to the nape. So I wanna keep that in mind. Now, um, and let me see, I'm gonna have to make sure I get this angle just right so you guys can see what all is going on. So I always start off with a really small piece because like I've said in my other videos, um, the size of your subsections is going to make a world of difference. And you can already see the placement of my hands is slightly different. So I've got a strand in each one of my fingers here. Okay, and from there, I'm just gonna go ahead and I begin to braid. Now with Dutch braiding like this over here, I'm thinking about the precise sections that I'm picking up, which is why you see those perfect part lines. With corn rowing, it's not quite the case. So what I'm actually going to do is just naturally go under and that hair is naturally going to be picked up. I don't have to try to pick up hair. It's just going to happen because my hands are so close to the head. I'm trying to do this at an angle to where you guys can see it. So. I apologize, I know my hand motions are kind of weird for this video because I don't want to block your view with my hands. So when I'm doing this, the key thing is making sure we're only barely keeping those fingers open and that way you grip just enough hair as you go through there. If you are uh, thinking about the amount of hair that you're picking up, I guarantee you, you're going to pick up too much hair. So I'm just going through here and if you'll notice I'm not having to grip the hair extremely tight because of the size of the braids and the technique that I use in terms of making sure I'm using really really small pieces they turn out really snug anyway without me having to put my client in any type of pain or discomfort so I've always been someone that ends up with really tender-headed clients as a result of it uh, Now I will say You'll notice every couple steps, I go ahead and pull my fingers through. That's really important because if you don't, that hair is going to tangle up extremely easy on you. 
Now, whenever you come around the different bends of the head, you always wanna make sure that if I'm turning that braid at all, I'm gonna tighten my grip just a little bit. And what that's going to do is it's going to help ensure that my braid does not come loose around that bend. So I'm going through here now, and now that I'm coming through this bend, I'm slightly changing the position of my hand and my body position. That's going to direct the braid on where I want it to go. So now I've moved behind this section, and then I'm just kind of turning that braid with me as I go. And it'll naturally lay that way when I finish. Now keep in mind, as we're going around these bends, I've got to grip a little bit tighter. Otherwise my braid is going to come loose and it's gonna look a hot mess and that's the last thing that we want. So I'm just gonna go right through here, just like so. Still making sure to detangle every few steps. Let me tilt her forward some. And we're just gonna continue this process right on down this section. And then let's see, I'll see if I can turn her some for you. Tilt her that way. And let's see here, I'm gonna drop that real quick. See if we can lower this so you guys can see a bit better. All right, now I'm just gonna pick it back up. I know you guys are probably like, what are you doing dropping that section? It's okay. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue braiding just like so. And we're just gonna keep all the way down through here. Now, as you get behind the ear on a live client, always have them tilt their head forward so they don't get bumps and that hair's not pulling at the base of the neck. The last thing you want is to have them pulling that hair out or to cause them a ton of discomfort every time they look down later. Now as I get back here, I'm working with significantly less hair to pick up. So make sure that you're picking up really tiny sections in there by just barely opening your fingers. And that way you're only picking up a couple of strands of hair at a time. And then keep in mind, the closer to the head you are here, the less of that uh, kind of bagginess that you're gonna end up with. I don't want my cornrows moving a ton back here. It's gonna get frizzy, it's gonna look a hot mess, and that's the last thing that we want. So I'm getting in really close here, just like so. And then from there, once I've done that, let me move you guys again. Once I've done that, I have the ends of my braids here to worry with. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and continue braiding in a standard underhand braid, just like so. So it's a little bit more tedious than Dutch braiding is in terms of some of the details, but honestly, I will say this is one braiding style where if you think about it too much, it's gonna mess up. So I'll tell you like I tell my students, don't think about it, just do it. Um, if It's the only time my students ever hear me say like, stop thinking, <laughs> but it makes a huge degree of difference. If you're thinking about the amount of hair you're picking up, you're gonna mess it up every single time. So just keep in mind, uh, just go ahead with it and braid and that way you don't have any issues. So you can see here, let me let it adjust. You can see here the tension all the way through. That braid is not wiggling and moving on me. It's really nice and secure. As we come around the bends, it still stays nice and tight, no movement. In the nape, nice and tight, no movement. So when I'm looking at that, it's not something where I can lift it and pull it up because I've got every last one of those hairs, no gaps down here. That's huge, um, because if you're picking up too big a section, you're gonna end up with a huge gap in the nape. So hopefully you liked this video. If you did, and if you learned something, give it a thumbs up, and let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay glam, and until next time, take care, and God bless. Bye-bye.